Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, I want to share with you all my thoughts on an MMO I got to try recently called Twin Saga. Now, before we go anywhere, this video is sponsored. Yes, I got real-life monies to make this video. That being said, all the opinions in the video are my own, based on the experience I had during the sponsored play. If you're interested in checking the game out yourself, be sure to check the description of the video. There is a download link, a sign-up link, and download link right down there. It would really help me out, and after you've watched this video, you may be more interested in it. So... Again, this was sponsored. I had never played it before, never heard of it, never researched it. And I jumped into it and I got some footage for you all to watch here. And uh, you can watch that footage while I talk about my experiences with Twin Saga. Now, just to give you a little bit more background on the game, this is a free to play MMO. It's very anime esque. I'm sure many of you will get that vibe. I even named my character Waifu Happy. Uh, it's developed by X Legend and it is published by Area Games. It's currently in open beta, so anything I say here could change before or after the game actually launches. So let's get into the serious stuff first because you guys heard me say free to play. So I already know where your minds are going and we're gonna touch on that right away. So it's free to play, meaning it does indeed have a cash shop. That is always gonna be the first question when it comes to free to play MMOs. And honestly, mostly standard cash shop stuff. You have some EXP boosts, you have some cosmetics, you have other minor boosts. I think I remember seeing an outfit that was like plus one to all stats, which is pretty irrelevant and like plus 2% EXP gained. So it's all standard free to play game stuff. I mean, when you opt into playing a game like this, you opt into things like that exist. Thing. So they're there. Another thing that was on the cash shop was this like gambling type system where you buy these crystals and then you use the crystals and you get like random other items that you can get on the cash shop. I'm not sure if it's cost effective. I didn't mess around with it at all, but I just noticed it was there. So I'm going to bring it up here. Now, those things, like I said, are completely normal in a free-to-play cash shop, but one thing that some games don't opt into that I'm glad that this game opted into was loyalty points, and those are, you know, points for being loyal to the game. And you don't just earn them by spending money. These aren't the same as the area points, which is what you'll actually use on the cash shop. These are points that are earned from logging in daily, completing daily achievements, whether they be solo quests or party quests. There's also hidden quests around the world that can give you loyalty points, and without even trying, I've amassed like five or 600 of these, and you can use these to again buy things for your convenience use these to buy exp boosts things like that so it's a means of getting stuff on the cash shop for free basically Overall, definitely far from the worst cash shop I've ever seen. Uh, it seems really, really mild compared to some of the stuff we see out there nowadays. Whether or not it stays that way, who knows? That's up to the developers, that's up to the publisher. But for now, it's it's very tame, and with the loyalty points coming in as frequently as they do, I was quite pleased with it. So now that's the business model. Let's talk about the game itself. So one of my favorite things about this, and you guys should know this because of the game that my channel is mostly known for, I love it when you don't need to make multiple characters. And in free-to-play games, Charging for character slots is something they can usually get away with. This game allows you to play all classes on a single character. That is an automatic huge plus in my book. And you don't have to pay real money to class change, even respecing a class. Apparently it's completely free of anything up until level 40. I believe at that point it starts costing you gold, not IRL monies, but gold, in-game gold. So uh, very, very flexible. And again, I'm just happy that these aren't things that the game is trying to force you to pay real money to do. Uh, and on top of that, it kind of reminds me of 1.0 with certain things, <laughs> and calm down, I know it, I know what some of you are thinking, because it's my channel. I'm talking about Final Fantasy XIV 1.0. There's character levels, and then there's class level. But what's nice about it here, is because your character levels separately from your class level, when you go to level new classes, your character level is a pretty big part of how many of stats that you have. So you actually are able to level these lower level classes really, really quickly up to a certain point. Uh, I was able to, I think at level 12 or 13, switch to a brand new class that I had just earned, the Cleric, and I was killing the same enemies without any issues that I had just been killing on my level 12 Gunslinger. So it's a very nice system. Gear also seems to transfer between classes, because when I changed classes, I didn't need to collect any new gear. All the gear I had equipped just changed to gear that was relevant for the class that I was using then. So it looks like, again, this is something that I'd expect a free-to-play game to do would be to try and like really bog you down on inventory and instead all the items just transform into items that are relevant for the class you just changed to so thumbs up for that again it's a really well done all class on one character system overall is what i'd have to say now the next thing when we talk about free-to-play mmos is how quick do you level luckily in recent years it's become much better or at least i feel it's become much better in the free-to-play market leveling and questing is pretty quick in this game and there aren't really many fluff quests uh the game follows a main story quest and then it has a few categories of side quests one of them are like senshi quests which are given to you by ai companions that we'll talk about later the big one that you'll see a lot of on the mini map are hidden quests those are completely optional and they're usually really ambiguous they don't tell you hey go collect this item for me you'll have to read the text 
text of the actual quest itself, or you may even just pick an item up in the world and then that gives you the quest itself. But these are really for getting loyalty points. They aren't for leveling up. So if you want to do them for loyalty points, you can. If not, you by no means are forced to do them. Now to do all this leveling and questing though, we have to talk about the game's map. Now this actually goes back to being a little bit old school. It uses a mixture of a world map to travel between individual areas as well as individual zones. I mean, think of it like the world map of Final Fantasy VII where you're out on the world map and then you zone into a little town. Think of it like that and it works pretty well for this game. Now on the world map, you have the Terra Cottage as your mount, which actually also doubles as your personal player housing. I really like the Terra Cottage because it can be decorated you can visit other players' terror cottages, and there's even community rewards for having people come visit your house and opening a chest with them all together at the same time. We all, somebody opened a chest and we all got a mount from it, and that was really cool. So I really like the terror cottage system, and you don't need to be on the world map to access it. You can be in the middle of a zone, and you can just press the button to go to your terror cottage, and when you're done in the terror cottage, it'll drop you off right where you entered. It's not gonna send you back to the world map or anything like that. And then in the individual zones, you don't ride the Terra Cottage, you have personal mounts. Some of them last forever, the first one you'll get will last forever. Some of them with higher movement speeds will last three to seven days. So again, stuff you're probably used to in a free-to-play MMO. And with all these things to do so far, and believe me, I could go on forever about a lot of these things, I'm cutting it back. We gotta talk about the combat. It flows pretty well. Sometimes the global cooldowns feel a bit laggy, and that's usually due to the sheer number of things happening on the screen or how quick your skills are actually being fired off. That could be fixed up a little bit, but it feels somewhat reminiscent of Final Fantasy XIV 1.0 again, where all the abilities aren't really on the global cooldown. They just have their own individual cooldowns, and there's like a one second global cooldown, like grace period, after a skill finishes casting where no other skills can be used. But other than that, you're just watching cooldowns pretty much the whole time. You're not following one button into the second button into the third button. It's up to you to figure out how you want to use all of these abilities in conjunction with each other, and it works pretty well. There's also ally characters known as senchis, which you can have with you. Even when you're doing group content, these are basically allies that give you additional skills. You can have up to three of them equipped at a time, and you can have one of them active in combat at any given time. But you can access their ultimate skills on your hotbar at any given time, as long as they're equipped to your character. Now, I said they have ultimate skills. Your character and each of your senchis have what's known as an ultimate skill. And these can provide huge buffs, they can do huge damage, they have really, really flashy animations, and it keeps you a little bit more active outside of the few abilities that you have for your character. Heck, I didn't even get to mention that there's there's benefits to leveling multiple classes, skills that you unlock that you can use on any class. Not like a cross-class system per se, but it's more like you unlock the ability to use a certain skill on any class. And that skill is specifically designated as a common skill, something that any of them can access. As for the content I've gotten to do up until about level 30-ish, I've had a lot of repeatable quests. I've been following the main story, which they do try to do a good job with. They actually have a full-blown story for you to follow if you're interested in it. And again, as somebody who plays the games that I play, following a story is usually a pretty big benefit for me. Uh, it's a lot of text, but again, when we're in RPGs and we're trying to tell stories, that's not that abnormal. There is a lot of voice acting too, and I did turn Japanese voices on. I don't know if the English voices were even available, but I did have a choice. I believe the English one said system next to it, so it might have just been system sounds in English, but I picked Japanese anyway because my stream wanted me to. So again, on top of the main story quest, I mentioned some of the other quests before. There's also uh, benefits to grouping up with other players. For example, bonus EXP when you group up with other players in the same zone. There's world bosses. There's dungeons that are really fun. I'm actually going to put some gameplay of that on the screen right about now so you guys can see what one of the bosses look like. This is only the second dungeon in the game too, or at least the second one I encountered. I know there's some other bosses that we could have fought before going into this dungeon that are considered a group challenge, but this was the dungeon that the main story kind of pointed me to. Yeah, this, this dungeon that you're seeing on the screen is only a level 28 dungeon, uh, and there was plenty of mechanics, but at the same time, on the normal difficulty for the group setting, uh, it was it was pretty forgiving. We were able to figure out these mechanics, and even though we didn't know what we were doing, and it seems like it's really crazy what's going on, we were able to adjust her pretty quickly. I'm really curious to see how this plays on the hard difficulty. So I did have a lot of positive things to say about my experiences here in Twin Saga, but of course there are things that it could definitely improve on. One of the big ones for me as someone who's colorblind is sometimes things aren't that easy to see. Uh, the chat is one thing, all the colors are static, I can't choose individual colors in order to be able to look at it a little bit easier. So enhanced chat options, while it seems like a small thing, is a, is a much more important thing to me than it might be to other people. 
Another thing is an easier means of grouping up. Uh, there's no like duty finder type content where it finds a group for you out of other random people. It's pretty old school like some of the other things where it asks you to shout for other people to group up, whether it's outside the dungeon or in a city. So it's old school and if you're into that, then you'll have no problem. I've done it before. I did it for seven years in Final Fantasy XI, but it would be nice to have the option to use a duty finder type content. I think that many people in this day and age are looking for the option to have their their dungeon entry be a little bit more centralized. Other than that, I mean, I went into this pretty skeptical. You know me, I'm always pretty harsh when it comes to free-to-play games, but it's drawn so many characteristic similarities to other MMOs that I've played over the years. MMOs that I have played for years. One I played for seven years, one I played for two years, unfortunately. One I played for, I've been playing for three years now, and it's taken the positive things that I like about those games, and it's put them into a different experience. So I've had generally positive things to say. My chat has had generally positive things to say. We made a guild, people have been playing together, and it's just been a fun thing to do so I highly recommend that if you're interested in what you've heard just check it out I mean you got nothing to lose it's free to play and it's really really good and that's gonna be a wrap for this video as again there's tons of things I missed like there's more character customization there's more stuff but unfortunately if I try to cover every single point that I like about this game or even every single point about the game period things I like things I don't like it's gonna take a while so I'm going to wrap things up here. I'll leave you the rest to check out on your own. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And if you're interested, again, hit that link in the description of the video. You can go sign up there and give it a shot. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. And until then, take care.